Hello everyone, this is Reza and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to focus on displacement in Unreal Engine 5.3. I'm not sure if you have watched one of my um, old displacement tutorials using the modeling tools in Unreal Engine. Now, while that method was working, there was an issue and that issue was with Nanite. Well, in version 5.3, there is a way to bring the power of tessellation in Unreal Engine and access displacement channel directly from our material graph. This is an exciting news and I'm going to demonstrate how to do exactly that. Without any further ado, let's get started. Well, let's fire up Unreal Engine. I'm going to start with the blank scene. I'm going to go to ray tracing. I'm going to call my project displacement and let's create the project. Here I am inside Unreal. Now, uh, first things first, I am going to create two folders. So I'm going to go into new folder and inside that I'm going to create one for materials and another one for textures. So I can sort of demonstrate how to use displacement once we bring it in. In our material, I'm going to go and create a, just a simple material MM for master material underscore disp for displacement. Now, just for the record, if I double click here, there is no displacement pipe. As you can see, we have base color, we have material, specular, so on and so forth. There is no displacement. And in the first chapter, we're going to see how to bring the displacement here. Now, that is a two step process. You have to enable tessellation from the config folder. And once you bring the displacement into Unreal Engine to see it, you have to run it through the console command. So it's a two step process. The first step, let's see how we can enable that inside the config folder. That's actually really easy. I'm going to bring the project directory into the monitor so you guys get to see what's going on. We're going to go into config folder, the first folder. And there we have a configuration settings folder in the default engine. If I enter, that opens the notepad. And in here we see all the important attributes that Unreal Engine and probably the user um, have set for the application. So if I just go in the second paragraph script engine, renderer settings, all I need to do is to add the tessellation in here. Now, you got to be very careful not to make any mistakes. So the way that I do it to avoid any mistake is I actually bring it in the command and copy and paste that. So I'm just going to type in the command r dot nanite dot allow tessellation. Now I can comfortably right click, go copy. And now I can go inside my default engine and paste it right underneath scene render target size method, followed by equal one and the digit one is going to enable tessellation. If you're coming from Unreal Engine 4, you know that tessellation was very powerful in Unreal Engine 4. With the introduction of Unreal Engine 5, uh, that uh, tessellation capability disappeared. And now, happily in Unreal Engine 5.3, we have that back. So once that's done, we're going to save. And one uh, small change I need to make actually, I don't need this command anymore, is I would like to go into plugin and just bring in my modeling tool set. We really don't need modeling for 
tessellation. I just need to have a simple plane in the scene. You can certainly do that using other software packages or you can create a plane by uh, going into modeling shelf and just create a plane. So that is going to bring the modeling mode into Unreal Engine as well, kind of killing two birds with one stone. If you don't want to bring the modeling uh, mode, you still need to restart your engine. So once you save, restart. Now, if I go in here, I have modeling Shift F5 enabled. And more importantly, if I double click, look what I have. We get to have the displacement ready, which is fantastic. Now, uh, we have this ready, uh, so let's bring some textures. Let's go to the next chapter and bring some textures in and apply that to our uh, plane. Well, there is no plane, so let's make one really quick. I'm going to go into modeling. I am going to bring in a rectangle. Click uh, for width and depth. Probably I'm going to go with 50. 1500 and we really don't need to add to the subdivision that's the beauty of having nanite available to us so uh, we can just simply move it up and go accept in order to get the support from nanite i can just right click in here edit rectangle and if i type in nanite you can see enable nanite support is available. I'm going to save and yes. If you have an object in here that you bring from other software packages, you can right click on it and there is a nanite option available that you need to enable. The process is pretty much the same. I'm going to drag and drop my material in there. I still don't have anything on it. I am going to save and we are now ready to bring in our textures. Now it's time to bring our materials. I've got uh, five materials prepared, albedo, AO, displacement, normal, and roughness. So let's go into our material and bring them one by one. I'm gonna start with albedo and bring them closer a little bit, RGB, to base color and again srgb is on the color space srgb is on the next one is our uh, ambient occlusion i'm going to bring it right next to my uh, base color texture sample and because it's a grayscale to lower the computational time i'm just going to use the r channel and bring it into ambient occlusion like so the next one on the list is normal map. I'm going to bring the normal map. RGB goes into normal and with roughness, sRGB off. So Unreal Engine detects it as a linear. I'm going to go with R channel into roughness. And again, we talked about all of this in our introduction to material. You can definitely check that out into uh, our Unreal Engine playlist and find that video. Now, quickly, I take care of the texture coordinate, holding down M, left click, and holding down 1, bring a single constant, so we have something to work with. I might as well go in there and convert the tiling to parameter, because I'm planning on creating a material instance, so we can have this as a parameter on our material instance. I can go ahead and save. Now let's bring the hero of the show, sort of speak, and that is displacement. Now with displacement, uh, what I usually do, you can definitely go with R into displacement and if you select the material itself and type in disp, you can see I have access to magnitude of the displacement here, but I can actually create a multiply here. So I'm going to bring in a multiply node and connect that into my displacement and create a constant and make that my magnitude. So I have two ways of doing this. I can hold down one and create a constant, plug that in, right click, convert to parameter, or I can right click here, promote to parameter from here, 
and I can now go in there and call that magnitude. So when I use a material instance, that will come up as well. Now it's uh, as simple as that. Let's go ahead. You can see the material now has been successfully applied. I'm going to go and save and let's create a material instance really quick and apply that. I'm going to go create material instance, change MM for master material to MI material instance. And I'm going to drag and drop that in there. So if I go in here, you can see material instance have been applied. Now, so far so good. Uh, probably you know pretty much all of that. We have magnitude and we have tiling. And if I go into tiling, I can successfully change the tiling with no issues at all. But the magnitude is really not working. As I mentioned, enabling tessellation is a two step process. We did the first step, we went into config, we opened engine documentation, and we added allow tessellation. The second step is to enable it in the viewport using a console command. The final step to activate tessellation is to go to console command and type in r dot nanite dot tessellation. And you can see the command comes up. Now instead of putting equal to one, I'm just going to press space one. So that's the command that you need uh, inside your console command area. And if I press enter, I successfully enabled displacement and now I can go inside this magnitude and play around with these values. If I go and play around with values, you can see I'm getting a live feedback. I can actually zoom in in some of the areas and start playing around. And you can see I'm actually changing the magnitude of my displacement inside the scene. And the beauty of that is that is nanite friendly. So I can actually copy and paste this around the scene and have my terrain or my ground floor or what have you. So that's a big difference between this method and the old method where you can just now go and hold down alt and comfortably move this guy around to be able to sort of populate any asset with displacement in your scene. I can at any point of time, um, go in there and sort of change my uh, light to get a better read, zoom in and readjust my displacement. So you can see how easily and quickly you can set up your nodes and make use of displacement directly inside your material graph. That should do the trick for this tutorial. Um, it's a new feature. So I thought I would put together a quick tutorial and talk about that. And I hope you found this uh, video useful and use it in your projects as usual. Thank you very much for your support. Have a great rest of your day. Until the next video, see you guys later.